Hey everybody, it's Dr. Linda from the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. If you're on, send me a quick note so that I can see that people are on. Uh, in about three or four minutes, Dr. Weiner will be joining me, the world-renowned expert in hemangiomas and other vascular birthmarks. Today, our topic is hemangiomas, when to treat and when not to treat. This is a very critical question that I often get asked by parents, and the reason that we're having this session is so that you will have the opportunity to ask one of the world-renowned experts these questions. One of the things that you need to know, <laughs> okay, put, a, put on a mask to give yourself a fun look. No, I don't think I'll do that. But anyways, um, so I'm hoping that the audience will begin to submit questions. This is your most watched live video yet. Great, I'm not seeing any questions pop up yet. So I'm hoping that I will be able to see them. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not. Uh, let me see if I hit the bubble down here. Okay, let me, okay. Oh, Corinne, thank you, Corinne, for joining, and hello, thank you from Seattle, great. Um, so as I said, this is Dr. Linda from the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. Hi, Corinne. <laughs> and in a few minutes, uh, Dr. Milton Weiner, a world-renowned expert in hemangiomas and vascular birthmarks will be joining me. He's actually running up from the uh, a surgery suite to, to join this um, live chat session. So he will be here any minute. Um, one of the things that parents need to know is that there is no medical school that teaches about hemangiomas. So this is the reason a lot of parents say to me, why doesn't my doctor know? Or why do the surgeons I go to not know anything about hemangiomas? Well, that's the reason, because you don't learn about them in medical school. You have to take a personal interest in them to actually learn about them. And that's why VBF is on the forefront for education. We are trying to get as many doctors in the world trained to understand how to diagnose and accurately treat these lesions. Um, so I'm very excited about today's session. The topic is hemangiomas, when to treat and when not to treat. Um, not seeing any comments coming in from anyone. I saw that Corinne was on. Um, if anybody is on with a question, if you could please type it in and let me see it because I'm not seeing anything. I'm not sure if I'm not doing something right. Uh, it worked the last time, but, um, oh, there's Mary. I have a question about sinus pericrani and its relation to my daughter's hemangioma. Um, well, Dr. Weiner, as I said, will be here in like two minutes, one minute maybe. Um, here he is now. So um, uh, here's, here's Dr. Weiner. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. So Mary posts a question about sinus pericrani and its relation to her daughter's hemangioma. Okay, so does your daughter really have a hemangioma? Because sinus pericranium is usually associated with venous malformations. And it means that there is a connection between the surface vessels and the vessels on the other side of the skull. In other words, the vessels deep to the uh, uh, bone or the skull. And it's usually found with venous malformations. Hemangiomas very, very, very rarely. I've never seen a hemangioma with sinus pericranium. It's almost always a venous malformation, sometimes an arteriovenous malformation. So it sounds to me like that mom that just wrote in about the child's sinus pericranium, you need to get a more accurate evaluation and um, you can write to me at vbfpresident at gmail.com and I can put you in touch with Dr. Weiner's office or staff to review your images of your child's vascular anomaly and he can um, then give you an accurate diagnosis. So he'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, I know somebody who we saw in Boston just posted on here, um, and as I said, hello to Corinne. So 
It says there are the number of people watching your video. Ten people are watching the video right now and it is building momentum. So we're ready to take your questions. As I said, um, oh, there you go. Her spot looks like a strawberry. Do they look the same? Um, um, is but, this, all right, it could be strawberry and hemangiomas are synonymous. In other words, they're one and the same thing. But um, once again, um, the issue here is that, yeah, push that. The issue is that you never get sinus pericranium with a regular hemangioma. It could be a different type, not an infantile hemangioma. There are other hemangiomas that don't behave normally, but sinus pericranium, once again, is almost always with uh, venous malformations. So I would be happy to review it. If you send me any information or any photographs, I'll have a look at it and talk to you about it. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Corinne. Two names from VBF's past with Dr. Weiner. Hi, Diana. Welcome. We're ready to receive questions, so please, um, we only have one hour, and usually the questions start pouring in really quickly. So, hi, Car Karina Grubb. We remember your daughter, <laughs> sure right? Do, yeah. yeah, Dr. Weiner, you Karina, remember? Yeah. yeah, her daughter. Right. And how, how are you, Mrs. Grubb? She posts sometimes on yeah. Facebook, so. Nice to see um, you. So Dr. Weiner is saying hi, Karina. Um, we're ready to take some questions on when to treat and when not to treat an infantile hemangioma. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to pop up, I think one of the things that's um, very important a There's Daniela from, uh, hello Daniela from Malta, <laughs> Dr. Wainer's here and he um, said he could possibly fit your daughter in. So uh, yeah, from the lady from Malta, um, if you come to Germany, your daughter's hemangioma is pretty small, so I should be able to fit her in. So even if the people in Germany are saying no, we should be able to find a space. So my suggestion is to go ahead and come anyway, and then uh, I'll see what I can do while I'm there. And that was for Daniela from Malta, who I've been communicating with regarding her daughter's hemangioma. So until the next question comes, one of the things I want to talk about is the philosophy that many physicians, especially primary care doctors have, that which is leave this alone, don't worry about it, it'll eventually go away, is not the philosophy that the VBF promotes, nor is it the philosophy of our experts. Now, obviously, there are a number of them that do go away on their own, but every child has the right to have treatment, and every parent has the right to have treatment options presented to them. So depending on how small it is, you can sometimes start them out with laser or the gold standard, which is propranolol. Um, so here we have a question. Are lymphatic malformations and port wine stains common to see in the same patient? Uh, no, not common. It's unusual. Uh, I always tell patients you don't typically hit, hit the jackpot twice. You know, once is enough. But if there is a port wine stain in conjunction with a lymphatic malformation, it may be a mixed malformation. You can get uh, some kind of skin staining together with, a, with a lymphatic malformation. So once again, I'd be very happy if you sent me a photo uh, of, the, of your child's lesion and some history or whatever studies you have, I'll take a look at it and see. But once again, it's not common. And if you see a port wine stain or a skin stain, in conjunction with a lymphatic malformation, usually mixed means that it's a mixed malformation, probably a mixed capillary lymphatic malformation. Now it says my daughter has a port wine stain on her forehead, and her lymphatic malformation is mouth and floor of mouth. Okay, so the port wine stain that's on the forehead is it in the middle of the forehead or on the side? Because if it is in the middle, it's not a port wine stain. It's a midline malformation, which is very, very common. This is commonly known as an angel kiss. And uh, at the back of the neck, it's the stalk bite. 
These are present in about 50 to 60 percent of children. They are not port wine stains. Yeah, yes, middle of the forehead. So this is not a port wine stain. It is a midline malformation. About half of them disappear spontaneously. The other half will persist. They respond very well to laser treatment and uh, usually one or two laser treatments is all that's necessary. Now the lymphatic malformation is in another location so that is in fact a lymphatic malformation. The midline lesion on the head occurs in about 50 to 60 percent of children. It's actually very very common. So uh, that's the story. So they should be treated separately. Until the next question comes, to get in touch with Dr. Weiner, his email is mwmd01 at gmail.com. That's mwmd01 at gmail.com. You can also email me at vbfpresident at gmail.com. All right, so here I also have central serous retin retinopathy, retinopathy mm -hmm. on my left side same side as my Poor port wine, wine stain. What, what was are, they, are they related? Uh, no. The Oh, hold on a minute. Do you have Sturge Weber syndrome? Do you have any other ocular findings? Where is the port wine stain? Is it around the eye or not? Uh, okay, so are you reading those? Well, they're going, they're going by really fast. fast. Yeah. Right, just slow down, everybody. Can we <laughs> well, scroll we, that No, down? you can't. You okay. can't. They just come through. So, the cost of laser varies from country to country. Email me and we can talk to Dr. Weiner about it. Billy is the one with Sturge Weber um, that has ocular involvement and asked you if it was related. Okay, so if the eye involvement is above and below or connected in the eye in some way, then it may be related. There may be some other ocular findings or some other eye findings. So it's very important to determine where the port wine stain is with respect to the eye. If it is adjacent to or connected to the eye, then that uh, is a relationship. And you should see an ophthalmologist to make sure that there are no other eye manifestations. There could be glaucoma and there could be several other eye manifestations. So that's the important thing. Now I think so there was a, a, a message that came through really rapidly about a hemangioma and we didn't see it. So if you could please just retype your question because right now we're caught up. So if we're not addressing a question you posted. There we go. All right. Okay. If, if three or more hemangiomas on the skin, is there a chance of internal lesions? The answer is we usually take five as the number, uh, although uh, the way to determine if there are internal hemangiomas, read that, I got Linda. that one. If there are internal hemangiomas, the way to determine that is to do ultrasound. Ultrasound is very, very non invasive. So I would say uh, if my child had three hemangiomas, I would get abdominal ultrasound. It's a non invasive investigation. The likelihood is that your child does not have internal hemangiomas. But still, if it were my child, I would go ahead and check anyway. What was the next the question? The other question regarding a vascular malformation in the, ear, in the perianal area or the extremities and the girl's having very bad periods and it's during, and she's in adolescence and, mm -hmm. you know, is it related? What can be done? Okay, so uh, periods cause a change or modulation in the hormonal status and uh, vascular malformations respond or change with hormonal stimulation. So clearly, as the periods come and go, there will be changes in the malformation. Uh, what type of malformation is it? And uh, is there something that we can do about it? Is it a port wine stain, or is it a venous malformation, or is it clippel trenone syndrome? That's important. She to has determine. it in cheek and eye. Is that the same? Is Alicia Brooke, um, are you the same one with the daughter with the heavy periods? So in the cheek and eye? Because that may be unrelated if it's in oh, the cheek Oh, and... no, this is the port wine stain. Oh, okay. Sorry. Port wine stain is in the cheek and eye, and so it is the eye is related. Okay. 
Oh, there she yeah. is. Yeah, two others just... Okay, shape. Okay. Lymphatic venous vascular malformation. Is this the that's, perianal lesion? No, that's the um, the face, port wine of the face. It's it's lymphatic venous vascular. Is Alicia, is it your daughter that has the periods? Okay. okay. So it may or may not be related. The only thing I can tell you is that we suggest that they never go on birth control because it'll make the situation worse and to see a specialist. Okay, and uh, once again, if there is pain on urination, you know, she should see somebody who knows a lot about vascular lesions. Where do you live? Do you live near New York? Or is there a possibility of you sending some, uh, um, some information to me and I can take a look? What is the... the they want to know if there's a correlation between temperatures and the affected limb where they have KTS, like hot yeah. and cold, can it affect it? So hot and cold will not make it better or worse, but a vascular lesion on the limb will actually affect the temperature. That much we can say. So I saw that um, someone asked why um, propranolol, which is the gold standard a beta blocker treatment for hemangioma, is started or discontinued at five weeks. I'm not sure what you just said. You it, the 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 questions are coming in pretty Very quickly fast. so yeah. um, the mom that wrote that just tell us the beta blocker which is the propranolol you said um, oh has a hemangioma that's gotten larger my four-year-old has five hemangiomas my yes, daughter has fast, yeah. large parotid hemangiomas so um, I knew this was going to happen, you know, we started slow, but now we have them coming in very, very rapidly. Just slow it's down, hard. please. Yeah, slow down. <laughs> Let us see them. <laughs> so, Dr. Wayne, just um, you address multiple hemangiomas to have the ultrasound, depending on the size of the lesion, determines what type of treatment you need. His email is m uh, m wmd01 at gmail.com. Okay, so there was a question concerning the treatment of uh, birthmarks on the abdomen and legs. Is it successful? The abdomen, usually yes. Uh, legs, no. The further you get away from the center of the body, the less successful. So treatment of the hands and feet is not that successful. Treatment of the abdomen and chest is usually much more successful. If she's talking about port one, uh, yeah, pulse port, dilator, yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, still has her hemangiomas. Can they still have them at that age? My, no, no, no. So at 12 years old, it's probably an involuted hemangioma or some other lesion. If you send me a uh, picture of your child's lesion, I'll look at it, and then I'll tell you, you know, exactly what it is. And we will say throughout the the video, um, his email, which is mwmd01 at gmail.com. So we did miss one or two on hemangiomas. Yeah. Um, if you could resubmit the hemangioma question if we have not answered it. And those Eight are Eight years shared, old, then, yeah. she has a congenital hemangioma on her left arm. Her hemangioma is now in regression. Okay, so for, by eight years old, it should be usually by about four and a half, five, what you get is what you're going to get. So the hemangioma continues to involute until the child is about four or five years old. And from then onwards, there's very, very little progression. So usually by about eight years of age, it's pretty much done involuting. So if your child still has something left behind, uh, then it should be treated and uh, it probably ought to be treated with whatever surgery or laser treatment or whatever. So once again, by eight years old, it should be gone. I mean, it should be done. Uh, are you able to scroll up and read older posts? No. No, no unfortunately, no, I can't. No, it's because it's live. We can't do it that way. It doesn't. Can, it doesn't allow us to swipe, and, swipe and go can back. You, can you repost? Here we go. I'm in the UK, I've been told it can't be a hemangioma at, at 12. 12. Possibly not. Yes. But again, you can send Dr. Weiner the yeah. pictures and so, the history. So the answer is yes at 12. So it depends. Was it there at birth? Is it getting, is it growing? Is it getting worse? If it's still progressing at the age of 12, it's not a hemangioma. Send me a photo and I'll have a look at it. 
Okay, what's the next one? They're just sharing oh. it. Lots of people are sharing it. Seizures and hemangiomas related in any way? Uh, seizures and hemangiomas. If it's facey syndrome, then they could be related. That's provided it's a segmental, very large hemangioma, and provided you've had an MRI. But seizures are quite common in childhood. And sometimes children with hemangiomas have seizures which are completely unrelated. So once again, they may be related, but if it is a segmental hemangioma, but if it's a focal hemangioma, then probably unrelated. If it's a port wine stain, it could be related to Sturge Weber and seizures. Um, yes, her, uh, the, then Nicole's ta asking us about her daughter who has one leg growing faster than the other. Mm -hmm. And this can be associated with yeah, hold on. Quibble Trinane? Yeah, or? so one leg growing faster than the other. Read the questions. Right, yeah. and nine others just sh oh, okay. sharing. So okay. one leg growing faster than the other. If there's a port wine stain on one leg or a vascular lesion mm -hmm. on the other leg, then, uh, you know, the bottom line is yes, it is related, usually related. Sometimes with port wine stains, there is soft tissue and bone overgrowth. So we do sometimes see limb length discrepancies, an increase in thickness or in length. And remember, Dr. Weiner works with a multidisciplinary team, so they treat every kind of vascular lesions. Hi, Kiana Hi, from Kiana. Trinidad. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Hi. Another name from the past, Dr. Weiner treated his son. Yeah, how's your son, Greg? How's he doing? Nick, he's a teenager now. Yeah, he must be. Yeah. Yep. Any any other questions? We yes, can't the, scroll, so yeah, we repost. can't. Let me just look at our time. So we're doing good. It's five forty-eight. Yeah. If we had to remove the hemangioma yeah. under the nose, as it showed, should there be any space? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Danielle, uh, I think. Okay. So nasal hemangiomas are a particular specialty of mine. Uh, it's something that Making I really an appointment. yeah that I really enjoy doing. And I've developed various approaches to, and I am able to remove hemangiomas. Oh. Okay, so propranolol, why is it increased with the weight of the child? As okay, the child so increases? the dose of propranolol is given per kilogram Local body Ireland. weight. Okay. As the weight increases, the dose should increase because it's a dose of two to three milligrams per kilogram body weight per day. So that's the reason it's increased. Hello from Ireland. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. <laughs> I have one or two patients in Ireland. And again, someone asked, and yes, you can make an appointment with Dr. Weiner. You can email him at mwmd01 at gmail.com or email me at vbfpresident at gmail.com and we'll get you the information about making appointments. He also sees patients in Berlin in addition to New York City. Oh, there was a question we missed. Uh, can we possibly come to you for help with her malformation behind her nose? Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah, no problem. I your advice. My daughter has DP mangioma. She is on propranolol for four years. Yeah. All right. So four years yeah. is a long time. Too long. And uh, uh, still does, growing. Does the hemangioma rebound or grow every time she comes off propranolol? Why is it? Why is she on propranolol for so long? Uh, if it's a segmental hemangioma, this can happen. So, six-year-old with KTS, pain when urinating, comes and goes. Okay, so the child with KTS syndrome who's having pain should be seen by at a center where they're used to dealing with KTS. Dr. Rosen is very, very good. And between Dr. Rosen, myself, and various other members of the team, we should be able to see uh, what what needs to be done. So, yeah, uh, it's hard. Do on my phone, it's yeah. 32 with a hemangioma on my right eyelid. It has gotten bigger okay, with my so age. Okay, so the 32-year-old, is that's not a hemangioma on the eyelid. Hemangiomas don't get bigger with age. You're dealing with a vascular malformation. You should send me a photo. It's probably a venous malformation or even an arteriovenous malformation, one of the two. So Zena, because your daughter's hemangioma rebounded, there's these persistent hemangiomas and 
actually your next option, and Dr. Weiner will tell you this, is probably surgery because you're just going to keep playing that game. This has been four years. Or alternatively, there are other medications that the child can be put on. If the hemangioma is still persistent and active, uh, we can try vincristine. Uh, we, there are one or two other things that we steroids. can try. Yep. Yes, well, steroids I wouldn't do, but certainly vincristine is okay. a possibility. Three-year-old with pelvic AVM, lots of pain yeah. when in her car seat. Okay, so uh, pelvic AVM should be treated, especially one that's painful. Uh, probably treated surgically. Can you read that? I've been doing sclerotherapy, for th but problems are getting worse, so we go to Phoenix. Should probably see Dr. Rosen. Yeah. We're trying to get him in California. Um, we're going to be having a conference. The VBF is in October in California. Free lodging, free admission. You can register at birthmark.org starting next week, and you'll be able to see this whole team for free. Uh, my two and a half year old still has hemangioma, hasn't grown since 12 months. Yes, but so no it, sign of it going yeah, away. So the hemangioma that's present at 12 years of age that uh, is still there is probably a hemangioma. And if it's still present at 12, it's not going to go anywhere. It needs to be removed. So if you send me a photo, I can give you advice either laser treatment or surgical removal. And it's not a big deal, it's usually fairly straightforward. Dr. Wainer's email is mwmd01 at gmail.com. Scope down the vocal cords. Internal hemangiomas have been found. ENT wants to do more invasive. Okay. How old is your child? The child with... Chris Queensland. Yeah, from Queensland. The child with uh, vocal cord hemangiomas. How old is the child? Is the child uh, less than a year or, or older? Please tell us and we'll be able to give you more information. And Dr. Weiner is an uh, expert, weeks, is yeah. a expert okay, in airway so lesions. For a child at 14 weeks with uh, vocal cord hemangiomas, the primary treatment should be propranolol. I'll read that and I'll get no, back to okay. it. Okay, so the primary treatment should be propranolol. Okay. We typically don't do anything invasive that early. Uh, we should be able to control it with uh, propranolol. If propranolol is not working, then we can progress to something else. But the first line of treatment is propranolol. So Laura, regarding your daughter, I think you and I have talked about this and that you possibly, your, her insurance isn't accepted by Dr. Rosen, but we might be able to get you in with Dr. Wainer's staff and somehow work through Dr. Wainer's staff to work you in with Dr. Um, Rosen. So please email me or Dr. Wainer so that we can try to get her into the system and get treatment. Thanks. Okay, the California Conference, register at birthmark.org starting next week. Uh, uh, who performs treatment at your, for, your, yeah, at your team? And my team, myself and Dr. Teresa O, both do port wine stain treatments. Oh, Michelle Grafman, Kristen's oh. mom from Australia. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Great <know>. picture of uh, <laughs> I'm glad baby that Kristen today, all grown up, not a baby, going, going, going to, to college. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. I'm very makes happy. Me, makes me cry. I feel like a father to her. Because <laughs> I <laughs> treated her. An auntie and an uncle. Because yeah, I treated her since she was a little child. Yes. So, great. Hi. Nice to see you, yep. Michelle. Okay. Uh, will you be, when will you be in Berlin? So I'll be in Berlin at the end of this week. Uh, I'll be there for a week and then I'm going again in March. But if you email you me, I'll be able to tell you the That's date. That's mwmd01 at gmail.com. Did you read the post? Not on, the one, uh, uh, it's a child with colitis and seizure behavior. Seizure yeah. behavior. So behavior. please sounds repost like a, that question. Yeah, it sounds like a uh, perianal malformation or yeah. a GI malformation. Yeah, we'd like to see that post again. And uh, message to Michelle Grafman in Australia. It's good to see uh, kids growing up. It's tough for them to leave home. My son's leaving home. He's going to college next year. So uh, Next just, to me. <laughs> <laughs> just one of those things. Um, yes, so the answer is yes to Michelle Grafman. Yes, yes. no, mwmd01 at gmail.com. That's my email yes. address. Yes, I've sent in some pictures. I'm not sure how the process works. I also have a port wine stain. Would you treat? 
Um, who did you send the pictures into, Heather? Put in the subject line if you're writing to Dr. Weiner, referred by Dr. Linda. That way he'll be able to connect that it's related to this conference. MWMD01 at gmail.com. Yes, my Chris. Email address. Yes, yeah. Chris, Queensland. That's accurate. And once again, the lady from Queens, Queensland, hemangiomas Elevated should be. Elevated liver and large spleen, milk yeah. protein. How old is the patient? Just, she doesn't know which question. No, we do not go to Alabama. Uh, four years old. Jenny, repeat your question on the four year old. What you know what, what we we probably ought to have Recall. away yeah can hemangiomas on the eyebrows be removed safely yes uh, we remove them from the eyelid the eyebrows anywhere in the eyes Enterocolitis seizures um so where is the lesion thanks for what you do and you treated her daughter's lymphatic mouth oh, thank you for the message wow. I appreciate it uh, the brow, yes, we treat hemangiomas of the brow. They can be safely removed. You've got to be careful not to lift the brow, so you've got to orientate the incision in such a way that it doesn't affect the position of the eyebrows. But hemangiomas of the eyebrows can be safely removed. Okay. Mm -hmm. For sharing the video. Oh, thank you for sharing the video. I appreciate it. Thank you. So the mom about the colitis, if you could re put repost again, Sorry, keep it we... short. They're being, it's being pushed through really rapidly. Just give us the age. Um, hello, Dr. Rina, thank you for your and treated Andrew and he's doing great. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, you Shinban. performed service on my daughter eight years ago. Elevated liver enzymes, okay, intercolitis, four years old, Jenny Waters. Is there a, a hemangioma on the outside or a malformation of some sort? Jenny Waters? Yeah, I don't think enterocolitis is related to a vascular malformation. So five hemang five, five hemangiomas. hemangiomas. Okay, Unless so are there well, are there hemangiomas in the intestine or in the liver? Has your child had uh, liver ultrasound and are there intestine hemangiomas or livers? What are the options for vascular malformation tumor on my son's forehead other than surgery? Well, it depends on the type of hemangioma. Or that's if, a malformation. Uh, sorry, it depends on the type of hemangioma. Okay, I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a malformation, if it's a venous malformation, we can sometimes do laser treatment. If it's an AV malformation, it can be embolized. Or even a venous malformation can be embolized. So we need to see it. You won't. She won't need any post-op, Danielle. When okay. Dr. Weiner removes the upper lip hemangioma. Okay. Let's so the right lady with enterocolitis. Uh, if there are no intestinal hemangiomas, then the enterocolitis and raised enzymes are not related. So, um, Jenny, your baby was born with a large raised hemangioma. Oh, you were on your leg. It hemorrhaged at nine weeks old. Surgery to remove it. Okay, that's from Daniela. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're waiting for the end. Okay, email yeah. again. Uh, from Brazil. <laughs> Malformation okay. in the buttocks. <laughs> so, yeah, so please, the lady from Brazil, please send me an email, mwmd01 at gmail.com. Did you read that? Just more people thanking you. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I can see up your nose. Well, we're trying our best not to make that happen, but <laughs> it's kind of hard because the things are scrolling up, so you just. Lift your head to see them. Well, we're both old, you see, so we both look through <laughs> our bifocals, and in order to read, you've got to lift your Speak head. Speak for yourself so, about being old. <laughs> so that's why you probably can see. My nose is so long, it's difficult to see her, but she's got a shorter one. <laughs> so that's, uh, okay, let me just do a time check. So we have 29 30. minutes left. 29 minutes. Um... 
Okay, we have Ann McCarthy just joined. That's Kiana's mom. Hi, Ann. Nice to see you. Nice to Logging see you. Logging in from Trinidad. Kiana's looking great. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Michelle Lai. Seven years old and has a facial hemangioma. So the lady whose daughter is seven years old and has a facial hemangioma, by seven we really should have gotten rid of it. There shouldn't be anything left. She's so, saying it's still there. When okay, so they, if there is something still there, send me a photo and I'll look at it and I'll tell you what needs to be done, either laser treatment or surgery. Heather, Dr. Wainer's main office is in New York City. He travels to Berlin and he will be in California in October for the VBF conference where everyone attending gets a free clinic appointment and free conference admission and registrations open next week. Is it still there? Where, where? So I do go to Berlin every two months and see patients. My baby is four weeks old. Oh. An island of Kauai in Hawaii. Sorry, the lady from Hawaii. Um, please, please post, yeah, Michelle. Post it we'll again. have to talk to you another time because um, it's pushing all of the other emails aside, and we need to get these emails from. But uh, Michelle, we will do the last stage of yeah, we, of the documentary. We, yes. um, uh, the conference is October seventh, and yes, Dr. Darrow, the dentist, will be there. How do you send it? Send it to my email at mwmd01 at gmail.com. <laughs> Make okay. your mark wear a heart. <laughs> okay, my 16 month old had mangium on his shoulder since he's been one week. Pediatrician. Okay, so, thought. yeah, you know, uh, it's very common for uh, pediatricians to not want to treat. Um, uh, hemangiomas, I'll answer that the question. But if you send me a photo, I'll tell you whether I would treat and what I would do. So please send me an email and I'll have a look. How long should a child be on RAP immune with a lymphatic malformation? This is very controversial. We don't know. As you know, RAP immune is an immunosuppressant drug and we don't want the child to be on RAP immune forever and ever. So if the child keeps rebounding once they come off RAP immune, then we should consider doing something else. There are other options for lymphatic malformations. There's sclerotherapy, there's surgery, and sometimes RAP immune will shrink the lymphatic malformation to where it's fairly easily surgically removed. So once again, not forever. One more time, located in Buffalo. Um, yeah, if I spoke to you, then um, you can email Dr. Wayner mm -hmm. and the photo of the five year old with facial hemangioma. Yes, email Dr. Wayner. Okay, I'll have a look at it and re respond sometime uh -huh. tonight. Promise Dr. you. Dr. Wayner has hands of gold. It's Thank you Lauren. very much. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Hi. I remember Lauren quite well. Yeah, yeah. So we just it's reading, hard. seeing patients. Heart state, all of my hemangioma moms and dads. And yeah. yes, that's it, mw01 at gmail.com. Thank you for putting that out there. Hi, Hi Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so the mom that sent through the other one on hemangiomas, if we didn't answer you yet, please send it through and um, the malformation as well, if you did not get an answer. Okay. Uh, laser treatments is age of concern if done without anesthesia regarding trauma. Okay, so, you know, this is controversial. Some people will put a child under anesthetic to do uh, laser treatments. Others will do it without. I believe it's very traumatic. In fact, I believe that it's quite painful for a child to have laser treatment without an anesthetic. Now obviously if the child is very young, uh, read that and then yes. I'll answer it. If a child is very young, they're not going to be able to say anything so and they have very bad memory, but still I believe it's very traumatic. So I would treat very young children without anesthesia, but as they get older I prefer to use anesthesia because I believe that children can be very traumatically stressed by it. Now some parents do do get it done without anesthesia and they're comfortable with that so you can 
talk to the moms. This discussion is always going on on the Port Weinstein parent Yeah, that's group. Uh, controversial. It's, it is I use anesthesia, Dr. Geronimus, who's a great uh, guy, so, who's very um, well known, does, does usually not. does not. Right, so the DP yeah. mangioma of Zanab's daughter is on her Zanab. left cheek. And um, what's the rest of the question? Right, so what is... Oh, oh sorry. How frequently do you typically treat laser under anesthesia? Usually uh, in the early stages, every six, eight weeks. In the later stages, once every oh. three months or once every six months. My 15-year-old daughter has a hemangioma on a lower First lift. surgery made it worse. Uh, okay, so um, can you let me have a look at the, the lady who's... That's fifteen Haley, year old yeah. Haley Lawson. Yeah. Email Dr. Weiner pictures. Send me a picture, Miss Lawson, and I'll have a look at your child's uh, malformation or hemangioma and I'll be able to tell you what can be done. Sometimes more than one surgery needs to be done. It's not unusual. So that's it. Uh, Erica, she was three at the time. Uh, she saw you three times, so she doesn't remember. <laughs> you can even okay. come up Linda so, Palermo. Thank you very much, Linda, for your message. I appreciate it. Thank you. I can read this without, yeah, I need my Bible. So the mom that has the little girl with the deep cheek hemangioma, please um, send that picture to Dr. Weiner. And again, let me say he sees patients in Berlin and New York, and we'll be seeing patients for free at our conference on October 7th in California. Registration opens for that next week, and there's free lodging for one night to all attendees, free clinic appointment and free conference admission. Um, so happy. Okay, so we're taking the next question, please. Oh, there it is. We have our time up at the top. So we've been doing this for 44 minutes. Yeah. yeah, we're counting down. Okay, must be 15 minutes. Yeah. What kind of treatments are available for venous malformations in the back of the throat? So the gentleman with, yeah, so back of the throat Usually I do laser treatment and I do this under anesthetic with a thing called a laryngoscope in and you have to be very careful because if the uh, treatment is done too aggressively it can block the airway. So I have many patients with venous malformation of the airway and the throat and we typically do the treatments with laser and it's done under anesthetic and it's fairly benign. It's not that painful, there's almost no pain experience, and very easy to do. Is surgical removal risky? Of the, risky? That's the one with yeah. the deep hemangioma. Okay, so if there is a deep hemangioma of the cheek, yes, surgical removal can be risky, but uh, because the facial nerve is there, and uh, the facial nerve yes. can be damaged, but if the surgery is done by somebody who really knows, understands, and monitors this, then it's not dangerous. I have removed many, many, many uh, hemangiomas of the cheek, and I'm not aware of anyone who's had a cheek hemangioma removed that's had any facial nerve damage. So typically, I, I'm happy to do this. And sometimes if the child is older than one, you don't have to remove all the hemangioma. All you need is normal skin, so that can be done very safely. Uh, Lauren, it was a huge success. Thank you very much, Lauren. So your... we will be posting Dr. Weiner's email um, at the end of the live video, but it just scrolled through again from uh, the VBF website on Facebook as mwmd01 at gmail.com. And if you post on the VBF page, we can also post it again. Oh, itchy hemangiomas on my five-month-old neck dermatologist had him on an antibiotic. You know, uh, if it is a true hemangioma and it's itchy, uh, you can use a topical, read the questions, you can use a topical steroid. That can sometimes help. Uh, I'd speak to the dermatologist. Sometimes we see eczema, and the eczema will need to be treated with steroids. So the person who asked, the conference is free for physicians. They can make a donation if they want, but um, he can register the same as a parent does by going to birthmark.org next week when the um, registration opens. Hi, Kyla. Kyla has two sons with hemangiomas, both in the orbit area. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
and yeah. And so. one of them is the temporal one, and they're very persistent. So the lady with the deep cheek hemangioma, this is something that I do a lot of. Uh, we monitor the facial nerves. So that the one's risk, in the diaper area. Yeah, so the risk is minimal. Yeah, what was the question about the um, diaper we area? We have been using Timolol yeah. topically on a perianal hemangioma. Yeah, so Timolol is a good treatment. Um, if the hemangioma is ulcerated, sometimes it can help. Read the this. one I was want to know if there are mast cells in lymphatic malformations. There are mast cells in lymphatic malformations. Uh, venous malformation is doing great. Oh, yeah, thank you. Is that Dr. Wainer or Wainer? Dr. Wainer, it's for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Liz. Thanks for the message. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope so, I've answered all the questions. They're coming pretty fast. Yeah, if we've missed them, just resubmit. If you resubmit them to me at mwmd01 at gmail.com, I'll get to them before the end of tonight or early tomorrow morning. I promise to answer them all. Okay. My she daughter. said it's been diffused. Wait, so your daughter has a, hemi a, the, a mangioma, but they thought it was a port wine stain? Um, different, make it make a difference. That one 12 year old okay. with a hemangioma, does that make a difference? We missed part of that. So the two questions have just popped up. One about a uh, 12 year old with a hemangioma and the other one was what? A port wine stain, but um, yeah, so okay. some of these are coming in quick. So if we could just leave the questions for Dr. Wainer. Um, okay, okay. Um, all right, well, we're, it's great. Um, I'm really happy that people are happy, yeah. but we've got to answer the questions that are going by really quick for patients that have individuals or children that need treatment. Severe KTS, hand and me and Joe Marner back. Um, Natasha, she should be seen by an expert. Dr. Rosen is an expert in practice with Dr. Weiner. Mm -hmm. uh, another one on KTS. Left leg and buttocks. Yeah, so, you know, once again, patients with KTS, we can see we have a multidisciplinary team. I work very closely with Dr. Rosen. And there's usually a lot we can do for uh, these patients. So, you know, we must have an objective uh, to try and improve. If we can improve quality of life, we cannot cure KTS, but there's a certain amount that we can do, which is very helpful. So anybody with a child with KTS, I'd be happy to see the child. We also have a fact sheet on the VBF website at birthmark.org on things with parents can do for KTS, keeping the leg elevated, getting them in a swim class, compression garments. All this stuff is, is essential because this is a, a condition that needs to be managed. Um, hi, Jolene. Dr. Weiner, just, you just did a treatment yeah. on her, a nice surgery on Jolene. Yeah. Hi, Jolene. Yeah. And for that mom that had a question on a hemangioma that we missed, because some of these are coming through really quick, if you could please post that question again. Um, there was an unanswered hemangioma question. So uh, some doctors advised to me to be injected. Yeah, Can so we typically don't inject hemangiomas, right? So if, all right. Uh, and that's a second one. Yeah. On so we typically don't inject hemangiomas. We do inject vascular malformations. So if it's a hemangioma, injection is an old treatment. Uh, can deep hemangiomas in the eye or eyebrow cause uh, cerebral visual, visual impairment? impairment? Yes. Anything around the eye can cause uh, a visual impairment and should be treated as a matter of urgency. So, uh, you know, if you have a child with a lesion, send me a photo and I'll have a look at it and I would be happy to, to give you advice as far as the eye hemangiomas are concerned. It was the other question which I missed. But anyway. the, vis the one on the eyebrow, you got that one? Yeah, I got that okay. one, yeah. So. Okay, thanks for thanking us for going live. Yeah. Um, again, some of these are really stacking up quickly, so if we're not answering you, re how often do lymphatic malformations grow back when removed? Okay, so lymphatic malformations do have a high risk of recurrence because it's very, very, very uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. It's very, very difficult to remove all of the lymphatic malformation. So what we typically do is I work very closely with an interventional radiologist. Just read those, please. And the interventional radiologist will usually mop oh. up what's left behind. But you have to be on top of this. You can't just do surgery and sit and wait because invariably there'll be some degree of recurrence. So you, it must be a multidisciplinary approach. So that person was saying that the visual impairment has already occurred. So if the visual impairment has occurred from a hemangioma, it depends on the age of the child. If the child is less 12. than 12 years or 12 months? 12 years. Oh, so if visual impairment has occurred in a child who's 12 years, it's not reversible. If a child has a hemangioma or vascular malformation, they, it must be reversed Hi, Mo, before eight from months. Korea. Be, it must be reversed before eight months of age because uh, other, other than that, there's not much you can do. Do you upper lip as a teen? It is, it is back as an adult. Um, you should send that case to Dr. Weiner at mwmd01 at gmail.com. Because if it's a, know. if it was a, um, yeah, if it was removed. So this is the person who had the hemangioma removed in Boston, and it's come back in as adult. It probably isn't a hemangioma. It's probably a vascular malformation. Lymphatic malformation. Yeah. So I should have a look at it yeah. and try and give you a good reason why it's come back and exactly what's going on. So. Uh, yeah. And moment. It's nice seeing you from Korea. Not sure if you've received uh, laser treatments for your son yet. Thanks for sharing the video. Them. We appreciate it, Becky. Thank you very much. So, is this the... Uh... Uh, we're winding down now. We have 12 minutes left. Becky, okay, just shared. Oh, okay, that's it. Yeah. Back as an adult. Yeah. Okay. See, Linda's got very bad eyesight. She yeah. has to... Well, that's because I have um, not helping I have uh, <laughs> the bifocals as well. Thank um, you for doing the surgery. Thank my you for the wine yeah. from her waist down to her toes. She's been treated by Dr. Geronimus. So, Dr. Okay. Geronimus is a very, very experienced guy. He knows what he's doing, and the likelihood of me getting a better result is pretty much zero. Uh, I can maybe do as good, but not better. So, I would say that continue with Dr. Geronimus. The only difference is I do, uh, sir, I do uh, treatments under Dr. Dr. Weiner hasn't been in Little Rock for 13 years. He's in New York City now. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. From Florida. From Florida. Hi, Kathy. She has a port wine with Sturge Weber. Okay. So. So the patient who wrote, um, there is a good team at Little Rock Children's Hospital. Yes. Yes. Dr. Richter and uh, Dr. Sun are both still there. Yeah, there's a vascular anomalies team at Arkansas Children's Hospital, which is excellent. So I highly recommend all the guys there. Yep. Okay, if somebody's um, question regarding a hemangioma or other vascular anomaly that Dr. Weiner treats has not had their question answered. That's the number of people, 43. Right, that's please. What it is. Yeah. yeah, at any one time, please send your question. Uh, I'm in New York City, that's correct, yeah. I'm but where? Len Lenox Hill Hospital. Uh, my yeah. office is at, in, at the Manhattan Eye, Ear and Throat Hospital in Midtown, Manhattan. Oh, anything on an update, update on glaucoma, and yeah. she sees Dr. Richter. You know, there's really not much of an update on glaucoma. Um, to read that, please. Yeah. yeah. There's really not much going on in glaucoma. There's a hell of a lot going on okay. with Sturge Weber and seizures, but really not much with glaucoma, I'm afraid. Uh, Her daughter has KTWS, which is and a very, very large malformation. So Natasha, wherever you are, you need a really good multidisciplinary team to manage this case. I don't know anyone in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm afraid. Um, um, although although um, Dr. Perlin now is putting Harlan. a multidisciplinary team together out of Miami Children's Hospital, which is now Nicholas, if you email me or message me on uh, Facebook, I will get you his information. Okay. So the lady who posted about the deep vein system in the leg, what's the best way? Dr. Rosen is very, very good at doing this. 
and uh, he does uh, venography and he's able to determine whether they're there or not. Sometimes an MRI, but the lady who has a question about veins of the leg, please contact Dr. Rosen through Dr. Linda. Our daughter has hemangioma. I remember Sandra Pollock-Peters. Oh, I remember. Yeah, hi. Communicating oh, I know. With I remember. Her. I remember. That's yep. right. I never Thanks for, for coming back. I never all forget these... one of our hemangioma babies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, storage yeah. is full. Yeah. Never Thanks. forget. Um, yeah. Thanks we, for posting. I really yep. appreciate it. So Thank I you. think we have nine minutes left. Nine minutes left. Uh, again, Dr. Wainer's email, mwmd01 at gmail.com. My email is vbfpresident at gmail.com. You can also message me through the VBF Facebook page or my own Facebook page. In fact, um, I was speaking to Linda and telling Linda how old we are. We <laughs> we started VBF. 23 around, years yeah, ago. It was like... Ages ago, Linda started it. I was just the well. You were our first leader. medical director. That's right. I was a cheerleader, and, and so we, we did our book together. A daughter, he's man. Yeah, that's right. Ten years ago, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so it's been a long time. We've been helping lots and lots of people. It's what makes me tick. It's what makes me live, and I think I can say the same thing for. Yep. Uh, for uh, Linda. Yep. Linda's always. And Dr. Wayne is the only surgeon in the world who probably does this 100% full time and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Do, do most hemangiomas go away. away? About half go away. So read this. Yeah, yeah. live a normal life. Yeah. yeah. So about half of hemangiomas go away. They don't most go away. So about half do and half persist. Kate, with KTS, depending on the degree of severity, will depend on her limitations and her mobility. Many have a completely normal life, but the key is to get her in with a good management specialist. So, yeah, KTS can be mild, moderate, severe. People with mild KTS usually live a pretty normal life. Uh, with moderate KTS, there are certain things that we need to do to achieve this. Our treatment of KTS is aimed at restoring a normal quality of life. So they may have to have treatment. Do I have any stats on babies? With lymphatic malformations. Uh, about one in a thousand babies are born with uh, lymphatic malformations. You have a great hospital in Gainesville, Spring Hill, uh, for information. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's um, in Florida. So it's about one in a thousand are born with a lymphatic malformation, and uh, you know, once again, they're mild, moderate, severe. I've seen kids with lymphatic malformations present for the first time at a very older age. Um, thanks for all the Ava piles. Yeah, thanks for all the good messages that <laughs> we're getting. I appreciate it. It makes me really very happy to see. All and it makes patients. me happy that I went three hours in a blizzard to get here to keep our Facebook live session going for everyone because we take it very serious and you'll all be excited to hear that we have other world experts coming up. We have Dr. Nelson next month. Um, How often should children with LM lymphatic malformations have MRIs? Um, and please read yep, this. That, okay. yeah. uh, a child should have an MRI if it's needed and if the MRI is going to change a decision. The actual location of the MRI does not change. The size may change, but typically uh, a child with a lymphatic malformation does not need to have frequent MRIs. The, um, the we, mother... only, we only do an MRI if we're planning treatment and we need some information. The mother of the child with Cloves disease, Dr. Weiner and his team with Dr. Bly, they are very versed in this condition. So again, you can email Dr. Weiner at uh, mwmd01 at gmail.com. Thanks very much for everybody who's reacted to the video. I think something like 52 yeah. people are online at the moment. Um, update, Bill, Bill Walsh, my neighbor, has... His uh, lymphatic malformation, oh, she's telling us about it. Oh, thank you very much, yep. uh, Miss Peters, I appreciate So I please stay it. tuned next month with Dr. Nelson, the following month with Dr. Geronimus, two world laser experts, 
we have our dental expert coming up and other surgeons and we will have Dr. Weiner back again this year so thank you all for tuning in we have a couple more minutes to take a few more questions before we wrap up once again Dr. Weiner's email is mwmd01 at gmail.com my email is vbfpresident at gmail.com He's very happy, willing, and able to review any images or records and give you his opinion. Also, you can see him in person for free at our conference in California on October 7th. Okay. Um, Mr. D uh, Javar, uh, Javar uh, I will read your email and I will respond as soon as I get to it. So thank you very much for that. Let's see how many and, minutes uh, we have. Once again, left? my email Three is minutes. mwmd01 at gmail.com. They're posting so it. It's yep. posted on the uh, website. So yep. thank you very much. And I promise to get to all questions, uh, even if I'm up all night. So we have two, two uh, minutes left. Thank you all for uh, logging in. Dr. Weiner is getting called yep. from the from the operating room yeah. um so yeah he's uh just getting called from operating room so i will be yeah, um thanking you now. all for um down. logging okay, in and thanks. joining us dr weiner has to go back now You're sorry i have to go back to the operating room guys i'm gonna have to cut short now right it's so, okay well okay? we thank you all and it's time for everybody to say goodbye thank you all for logging in we will keep this on our Facebook page for anyone to review again. And remember, Dr. Weiner's email is mwmd01 at gmail.com. And stay tuned next month for Dr. Stuart Nelson, world-renowned port wine stain laser expert. Take Thanks care. Thanks very much, guys. And God bless everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.